Alrighty, well, hi everybody, and back on again, and time for some more pinball. Um, and this is pretty much, I'm um, gonna be a repeat of yesterday, except not as bad. I think it was like, uh, 85, 90 degrees today, so, yeah, pretty toasty warm in my bedroom. Um, again, not as bad. I laid down at, uh, <clears throat> I laid down at 6, uh, woke up around 8.30, and then just pretty much tossed and turned for about an hour, hour and a half. It just tried laying back down. It just wasn't happening. Um, I it just it's too warm in my bedroom, so yeah. And then um, um, otherwise it, not really a whole lot else going on. I can't really. Hang on, I'm trying to check on something. Okay. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, um, probably just gonna be the usual. Um, just like yesterday, doing um. Doing some FX3, um, like usual, I test it, or I play test it, uh, to make sure it doesn't crash, or to make, to check, make, to check whether or not it crashes, um, with one time that I could think of, uh, if it crashes, it does it at the start, not like, not a half hour, 45 minutes in, or anything like that, so, I should be good to go on FX3, um, then, after a while, I'm gonna be switching over to Pinball Arcade, and then, um, depending on the situation, if I have, like, a, a little bit of time between now and, uh, 2 a.m., when, um, everything resets in Gems of War, I might play some Zachariah as well. So, that's, that, that platform there, I only want to spend no more than 30 minutes on. So, yeah, it's a pretty bad platform. So, um, um, otherwise, I can't. Oh, probably like uh, yesterday. Um, I'm probably going to be taking more breaks, more intermissions. Um, they're probably going to be longer ones. Just going to sit on and relax more. Um, so, yeah, especially... Uh, well, it's Monday, Monday slash Tuesday. So, Wednesday is when my work week starts up. So, I kind of need to... So, I, I kind of need to not exert myself too much. For lack of a better phrase. So, and then um, also, like I kind of said at the start of the stream, it's been in the, uh, it's been in the, it's been around the 90s for the past few days. So and it's 79 right now, and it does feel like it's 79. So I'm gonna be having this on for part of the time. I gotta get the temperature down to ideally 75. Otherwise, I can't really think of much else. So, just just that uh, two and a half hours of sleep. So, there's going to be that chance that I might end up, you know, killing the stream part way in. Yesterday, I didn't do that. It lasted the full six hours. Or, let me rephrase that. It lasted a full six hours. But, that's the exception. Or, let me back up. That's the exception. Not the rule. So, usually, uh, if I get that next to no sleep it's just you know maybe beyond like a couple two two three hours and well I was gonna do a jump to war stream but I'll just do a recap video later on I gotta go lay down plop you know that kind of thing so, so let me um let me set some stuff up here real quick oh I gotta show that window Again. I gotta slide another window over. I wish there was a way to. I wish there was an option to not not mute the game when I go to another window.
Oh damn, you can change our colors. I didn't know that. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna set my fan on the floor. Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't want to bother. Not with these kind of tables. I probably spent too much time uh, tilting a table with Spider-Man. Um, uh, not at 19 mil, no. Just go ahead and call it good on that. Got it. But yeah, um, and some people, and some people, some people like myself would have called bullshit on this 132 mil over second place, uh, 51. But I streamed it. It's documented. It's on video. So I have the evidence that you can do this. It's one of the reasons why I say that uh, FX3 here needs a replay feature. Out in here, it's just me. No. Anyway. But yeah, I've said it before. Um, FX3 needs a replay feature. Preferably automatic. Kinda sussy on this one. Like I said, I'd like to see a replay on this one. I mean, when first place is uh vastly is vastly higher than uh second place. Yeah. Pretty legit tournament here. Um, this is how I like it. All the scores are fairly close. So, yeah, I can't complain about this one. my crutch. Okay. Yeah. Please, not the moon. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel right. the worst in me. Nasty stuff.
time as you, doctor. Watch your nudge, Joe. Patroller. Well, we're not going to have to deal with this again. Limp dick. Oh, just barely got it. Well, this is gonna be a fail. Yeah, gonna be a fail. Shots are lit, none are gonna get hit. Oh shit, I didn't even know I was up. Okay. No, stop the timer. much for that. Will you stop? Goddamn shot eater. Shot eater. Lamp dead. Oh, bear. nope, nope, nope. Made it. It made it. No instrument for Joe. Oh, it ain't gonna matter. Only seven seconds left. Yeah, not even close.
Hop. Can't seem to hit what I'm aiming at. Yeah. Much. You two have homework? No. Good. Because you're going down to the pier to hand out flyers. Sure wish I could hit those drop targets that are like standing like right out in the open. a lot of that crap. No, no combo for Joe. Shot I can't stop making. I can't make it now. There we go. Where to go? Well, 72 mil. I don't know. Can't remember what the top score was. Number one. Still a beatable score, though. Somebody will probably come along and get a score of like 750 million or something like that.
Oh. Gotta be Scar Boost. Oh, surprise is there. Yeah, there's a big shot eater right in the right in the middle of the table. So yeah. Multi ball isn't almost any kind of multi ball is not that hard to get. But at the same time, it is gonna take a while to get it though. I know of uh, two of them. But both of them are gonna take a while to get to. That there, that's the shot eater. And I guess, I guess the fucking ball drain's also a shot eater. man or that one like I said I never intend to go in there Catch the ball. Well done, so, yeah, and you don't want you don't want to go in the UFO because the clock doesn't stop. So, I've just lost about ten seconds going in there. This is locked on target. Or that one. Well, I guess I'm kind of eating my words. We got multi ball. So, make all the flashing shots. Okay, um, I think I got it. Got it. Gotta get the left loop. Looks like it's not gonna happen. 
Left loop twice for a uh, total annihilation. Nope, I'm just gonna go in the shot eater instead. Shot eater. Unfortunately, I only got about 45 seconds to do something. Gotta love it. it up. No matter how hard I try. What was this one? No. I guess I'll give this one a go. Now, mission. Leave a message. So, for multi-ball, hit the very same hole I was uh, shooting at. Which means I'm probably not going to hit it now. So much for that. Since we can't, uh, since ramp shots are pretty much a no go on this tape, or I should say on this version. Biggest fish I ever seen.
So, at 27 mil, with only two minutes left, I am not even gonna bother. Yeah, listen to mine. Yeah, sucked ass on my own tournament. Shall here? Me, you, and America Chavez will surround her with a pincer attack. You're in trouble. You know, my little critters excel in finding stuff. Skill shot, awesome! <laughs> Shell here? Me, you, and America Chavez will surround her with a pincer attack. Not quite strong enough. And new shit. Yeah. They really need to tighten springs on these flippers. Yeah, I gotta love those hypersensitive slingshots. Magic. 
Nothing you can do. sucked. No. Fourth out of 16. Yeah, I can't complain too much. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 what the hell? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to, definitely gonna need to see a replay on this shit. Yeah, 12.6 or 12 billion versus uh, 2 billion, and even then, these here are a little sussy too. Kind of the same thing here too. 68 billion versus uh, 24. Pickens. Much for that. Lamp dick.
I would have on, baby. No. Watch for that.
No, oh, trying to catch the ball. See, light didn't hurt a bit. After lit, then they're gonna hit. Well, how about that? God. Yeah, that sucked. I'm always rolling when I'm not draining. Looking so good. Oh, you stop. Double flipper, bitch. Bit of a technical issue. Oh, 
Looks like it's the end of the road. Oh, just barely. Double flipper, bitch. Sure would like to lock that ball. Nope. Eater. Joel quit making that shot. by a multi-ball. playing licensed music. So... So it looks like uh, even then, it doesn't get everything. The, the licensed music option. They're about to play um, Roseanne Cash, I think her name is. Every little thing about you. But um, I played this table on Pinball Arcade. And uh, I played this music. This kind of music was playing during multiball. My uh, whole video would end up getting copyright claimed. So. so guess what I get to do? Oh, trying to catch the ball. There. So, now that multi ball ended as quickly as it began. Oh, 
Hi, Dell. Well, it lasted. Number one, took it. So, I guess I could turn the music back on. But yeah, I was, um, I was talking about it earlier. I got licensed music turned off, but it doesn't get everything. They're playing um they're playing a country song on the last table I was playing. Which uh I I I played the very same table on Pinball Arcade, having that having that country song on there. It ended up getting my video copyright claimed. So So far, I'm in first. Okay, nope. Minty formaldehyde flavor. Whoops. Flip, dick. Right 
No. So much for that. Kind of fell asleep at the wheel there. Just barely. Of course, the one time I actually want to get the ball in that hole, it doesn't. Well, how about that? Yes.
Out of there. God, I don't think I had any moats started either. Yeah, that didn't last long. That's what I said. No. <laughs> Just barely. Yeah, the best just ain't good enough. I guess I can create a tournament. Try off. Ultron. Um. One day. Um, let's do survival. And then, um, yeah, after this, it'll be a uh, intermission. Elsewhere. Watch your back. Okay, you don't want the ball up in the bumpers. A waste of time. Plus, it eat, eats up your combos. Well.
I stand ready. Bruce, I'm not your uh. enemy. Careful. Well, fuck. I need it elsewhere. Watch your back. You asked for it, big guy. Uh, what did I do? Thor's might is on your Jesus side. Jesus Christ. Bruce, it's me. Everything will be all right. Keep it up. You're almost there. We need the others. Get to Avengers Tower. Thor what? Thor will soon depart. You are on your own. There are innocents trapped in the city. We need to help them. Will you stop? Don't give up. Keep looking. It's all a group hiding here, Cap. Get them to safety. I'll find the rest. Well, so much for the civvies. Nope. Can't, can't make my shots. So. Your trust in people is your greatest weakness. Oh. Avenger, assemble. Multipliers increase. Went right by me. Goes all 60 seconds. Only six more. Let him buy. Let him buy. Let him buy. She is mine. Easily beatable. Wasted too much time on that video mode. Okay, so. so I'm gonna go ahead and call it good on FX uh, FX3. Also, uh I decided to go ahead and change my uh, change my background from just a plain old black screen to my uh, desktop. Just took a just took a screenshot of it and decided to go ahead and overlay it.
I don't think this is a cop chase. It's just the first one that came up. Uh, I think they're doing a like a drug bust or a I guess they find a bunch of weapons here. Here, let me, uh, let me, wrong one. Let me see if I can find an actual chase. I don't want to be spending all morning doing this, so. this um I had this video going yesterday so I guess we'll just go ahead and pick up where we left off get up on my feet and off my back and I'll probably make me something to eat too while I'm off. So. I'll be back.
miss. Don't. <laughs> he will make damn sure. Wait, I think um, I think this one here, the guy they just caught, I, I don't think he's a chief of police, but I think he was a police officer at one point. I've been doing a lot of that this session too. A lot of Tolton. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and switch to that. Because um, if and when white women comes on, he wants me to do um, he wants me to do a reaction to a video he has for me. Um, I wasn't able to do it um, earlier this afternoon. It just felt too much like crap. So, yeah, I'm still kind of, I'm kind of anticipating him coming by. And when he do, like I said, if and when he does, I want to do the video he asked for me. So, what I'll go ahead and do. Okay. Ah, oh, special force. Um. Oh. Uh, I might have seen that I might have played this table a lot when I was a little kid like back in the early 80s or I guess the mid 80s I suppose
Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess mid eighties. But yeah, this, this is an actual table. So yeah, picked a good one. Too bad the music don't last long. Nostalgia. Kind of a bad, kind of a bad shot to make right there.
Lamp deck. Oh. Okay. Then, um, yeah, that was ball three, and I think it drains, so. Right. Oh, you almost came at a good time. I'm at an intermission right now between FX3 and Arcade, so. I'll go ahead and, um, 
kind of set yours up here. Actually, let me. I want to try something real quick. Certain way I want to do this. Uh, I guess we'll. Kind of setting it up right now. This is Gerald. Pause. This because Pause. the version got age restricted by YouTube. In short, this means some of you can't. All right, let's try that again. Fucking thing froze. Fuck. But yeah, and this is a different this is a different version of the video you gave me white. Okay, so I need to sketch in a little bit of background on this. Um, he'll probably talk more about it in the uh, video. Um, but um, but yeah, white the one you gave me was actually age restricted, and which um, it just creates a whole host of problems. Uh, when um, there's a certain way I was wanting to explain this, but yeah, it just um, it one it makes it so uh. 
I can't download the videos if they're age restricted. Like I can't download them and um only certain only certain people can watch them. Like, you know, 18 and 18 and up and where whereas with me, anyone should be able to watch my videos, not just the older ones. So luckily he has this version here. And then for for those that don't know, um White women here. He wanted me to do a. He wanted me to do a reaction on this video. Um, I watched this. Um, I watched this video a few times over the years. So I figured, man, eh, why not? Otherwise, I think I'm good to go. Hi, this is Gerald, and this video exists because the original version got age-restricted by YouTube. In short, this means some of you can't watch it, so I made an alternate cut that hopefully won't trigger anything. Fast forward to here to watch it now. Short story long... Uh, which is what I'll go ahead and do... Okay, yeah. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and show this whole thing. Hi, this is Gerald, and this video exists because the original version got age restricted by YouTube. In short, this means some of you can't watch it, so I made an alternate cut that hopefully won't trigger anything. Fast forward to here to watch it now. Short story long, I spent an embarrassingly long time on this video to try to explain why fighting games aren't just a bunch of button matching. Luckily, when I uploaded it, the response was everything I had hoped for. People found it a useful primer on fighting games and something they could share with their non-fighting game yep. friends. But it wasn't until a few days later... And for what it's worth, this was one of the... This is one of the things that got me into fighting games many years ago. Um, I'm trying to remember which video it was. Uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Why you should play fighting games. I got about halfway in there. Um, those that know me know what I'm about, about to say. I uh, saw Broly legs, and I figured, oh, maybe I, oh, maybe I should at least give, them, you know, maybe I should at least give them a try. So then, um, right when I did that, Corey Gaming video started appearing. So I just started watching them, and then, like I said before, I've uh, seen this video a few times over the years. So, but not a, uh, not this version. on fighting games and something they could share with their non-fighting game friends. But it wasn't until a few days later when I found out the video got age restricted. Like a lot of you, I was pretty surprised and confused. Was that really an R-rated video? So I tried my one chance to appeal, but they rejected it. No specific re that, That's something else that's kind of bullshit about the way YouTube works. Is uh, when, they, when they copyright claim your video or when they do stuff like this, you can appeal it but you're appealing it to the very same people that's copyright claiming your video. Which is, no, no, it should be taken to like a third party. You know, like a like an actual impartial judge, that kind of thing. You know, not to the very same company that's fucking you. So, so hardly a surprise when, they're, when they uh, reject your, when they reject your appeal. Reason was given, and people had all kinds of theories as to what it could be. So I guess I have to guess. It probably goes without saying at this point, but for content creators, YouTube is like trying to play eight-player Smash with all items on in a scrolling stage. That's in order for everyone to be able to watch this video, I went ahead and made the family-friendly cut with your suggestions on Twitter. It has some alternate jokes and references not in the original version, so my biased opinion, I think it's worth a watch. The original version will always be up if you prefer watching that instead. So without further whining about YouTube, I present to you Why Button Mashing Doesn't Work, Family Man Edition. Button mashing in a first person shooter doesn't work because you just waste all your yeah. ammo before you got anywhere. It doesn't work in real time strategy because you wouldn't even be able to select your starting units. Commander, there are tutorial videos awaiting your review. And mashing in a driving game would probably look like you were really drunk. 
It's obvious why it doesn't work in those games, because random button mashing is the video game equivalent of violently flailing your limbs. That's why it kind of makes sense that people button mash in fighting games. Most people don't know how to fight in real life. Violent limb flailing might be a good strategy for beating your younger brother or sister, but everyone knows that this is far from martial arts mastery. It yeah, and and I'm kind of I'm a button masher too, so. But um. Good thing I had this up and running. I mean, yeah. To this day. I'm this is this is kind of relevant. So, but yeah, but yeah, I'm a I'm a masher myself. I mean, even in some even in something like pinball, you guys are probably seeing it. I'm always flapping and flipping and and all that. Even while even when I don't have the ball, I'm still. Still flapping the flippers, um, but yeah, when it comes to fighting games, I'm kind of like that as well. Um, in fact, the game I'm playing these days, Dojo, or Dojo Masters. Um, yeah, I, it's just it's kind of a kind of a nasty habit I have. Um, it's one I can't get rid of. It just I I gotta be pressing some. It's probably one of the reasons why I suck at fighting games. It just, I, I, I gotta be pressing something, so. It is understandable why people do this. When you have no choice but to fight, it's better to do something than to yep. just stand there getting hit like a dummy. Game developers understand this, which is why they've taken measures to make button mashing do cool things. Mash punch to punch a lot, mash kick to kick a lot, mash L to do all this. Stuff like this can make limb flailing a bit more dangerous, but it won't make button mashing any more of a viable strategy <laughs> against people. <laughs> I forgot about that. What they're doing. It's yeah. a button mashing it fighting is not, game. So what are these people doing that mashes are not? Why does button mashing not work against them? To find out, we have to go back. That's because uh, they've been playing so damn much, they got it down to an art. I kind of picked a bad time to start eating. They're playing at such a level that they're all kinds of calm, cool, and collected when they're, you know, when they're up, when they're fighting and stuff. They're not having to bang buttons. They can just, you know, how can I put this? Their technique is so refined that they don't need to they only need to push a button once because they're so good they know they know exactly what to do when I'm kind of like that too when it comes to pinball but um but given the nature of pinball the ball doesn't always do what you want it to so that just creates a lot oh shit oh, you know you're flapping the flippers you're or even worse you're you're popping them both up which you shouldn't even be doing um, you guys have heard me say that from time to time, calling it the double flipper bitch. You know, it's when the ball, it's when you pop up both flippers, but yet the ball just kind of boom, drops right between them. But yeah, it's still a, it's still a habit I can't, I've never been able to get rid of, even since childhood. So. Back to the beginning of the round. Round one. In many forms of wrestling, the round starts up close, sometimes really close. In pistol dueling, which was an actual Olympic exhibition in 1908, the fight started from about 20 meters away. But in video game fighting, you can have a wrestler and a gunwoman in the same fight, allowing players to battle in all sorts of ranges. Guess who has the advantage at this range? So I kind of have a... I want to say the pinball equivalent of neutral. I want to say when you actually have the ball. Oh, 
Okay, so this seemed like a great idea in theory. Like doing some, uh, having some pinball going in between the, um, in, you know, between this and the video. But it's just, it's just too tedious and too much of a pain in the butt going back and forth like this. So, I'll just go ahead and leave this on. But, uh, but as far as pinball goes, neutral, I will probably say when you've, uh, when you've caught the ball. Or when you're in some position where you know the ball, the path the ball's traveling, you you kind of know what you want to do with the ball as it's approaching your flipper, or as it's going to whatever whatever you've designated as point B at the moment. But yeah, I kind of I kind of see a relation between pinball and this. And at this range. The fight ideally starts where neither person has a significant advantage, a situation where it's neutral for both fighters. If you're mashing when the round starts, you might get hit like this. Nope. Mashing randomly fails to consider which attacks have good reach. The side perspective in these games help you gauge distance so you can clearly see your positioning and attack ranges. Having a longer reach means there are ranges where you can hit them while they can't hit you. Why use a stubby jab at this range when you have a giant sword? If you ever watch me play um Dojo Masters, um the the martial arts style I use in there, Krav Maga, it's centered around uh, counters and uh, counters and grabs. But yeah, it's you'll see me do this constantly. Like there's two moves. Um you can counter a punch and counter a kick, but you'll constantly see me like if you if I do a if I'm doing counter and punch, you'll see the you'll you'll constantly see the uh, arm go up, like they're they're trying to you know counter, counter punch or counter a kick. You'll constantly see my knee pop up. But yeah, I'm um uh, the I think the one and only time I played online, I I was pretty much taken advantage of on that because the moment my opponent opponent saw me. He just comes in and kicks my ass. So, it's what spamming gets you. But, like I said, just like pinball, it's a habit I, I can't get rid of. Another problem with constantly attacking is that when you start an attacking animation, you cannot block until it finishes. The longer the attack animation, the longer you're vulnerable to getting hit. And if your opponent has quick enough reflexes, they'll take advantage of it every time. So, it's, um... I got a feeling he's got to talk about it later, but it's called whiff punishing. Uh, my all-time favorite 2D fighter, footsies. That's one of the main elements of that game, whiff punishing. In fact, there's a there's actually a mini game in there, where that's what it's all. That's what it's all about, uh, whiff punishing. Whiffing an attack and getting hit before you can block again is called a whiff punch. Okay. Oh my goodness. Fighting games loosely borrow this logic from real fighting. This whiff, then punish, is called a cross counter. Just like in any fighting sport, attacking carries risk. It's especially dangerous in games with long range moves that start up quick, lead to good damage, and have long recovery animations when whiffing. The hard slash in the Samurai Showdown series is yep. one of the most notorious yep. examples of this. Yep. Back in the night, back in the, I think it was the early to mid 90s when I first played off. Uh, Sammy or Samurai Showdown, that was what I did. Um, and the AI in the old ones aren't that great. Like they usually, they usually operated on a predictable pattern. So for the guy on the right, the white guy, Hal Maru, if you could um, if you could do some like just, you know, put the jab out there or do a quick attack, to try to get him to do the big, the big slash. If you can get him to do that and miss, you can counterattack on him big time. So, that's a all-time classic right here. Whiffing it is bad. Another problem with constantly attacking is that you often cannot attack and control your movement at the same time. And movement matters because your positioning determines if an attack will reach or not. While you can't move your head like this in most games, you can move your feet. 
When you form a strategy based on movement and striking ranges, you have what people like to call footsies. Yep. The kick I'm doing is the most effective move for both range, footsies. But the movement doesn't necessarily have to be with your feet because video games have magical characters that can wheel, fly, unfly, or even hover because you happen to be a punching bag. One definition from the Street Fighter based footsies handbook describes... I think I tried, um... I think I tried reading this once. Like, many years ago. I don't... I kind of stopped at some point. I don't know why. But yeah, I, I do know about this. Um, and I have tried reading it. Describes footsies as the mid-range ground-based aspect of fighting game strategy. And High Fight has made an entire game around this. Like I said, my all-time favorite 2D fighter right here. Concept called Footsie. This game is so mid-range and ground-based that there's no jumping, no projectiles, and... Let's try that again. ...in strategy. And High Fight has made an entire game around this concept called Footsie. This game is so mid-range and ground-based that there's no jumping, no projectiles, and no knockdowns. But what kind of strategy can you have with something so simple? Well, the first lesson of Chapter 1 in the Footsie's Handbook shows one of the most basic strategies. Walk into your opponent's striking range and immediately walk right out to bait them into whipping an attack. Yeah. Then whiff on it. You kind of do the, kind of did the same thing uh, back in the 90s on Samurai Showdown like I talked about a minute or two ago. Uh, especially with a hollow Maru or anybody that has that has a big, huge, obvious um, swinging attack. You know, if you try to get them to, you just try to get, you try to induce that big attack so he whiffs it, and you can counterattack on him big time. Kind of the same thing here. Here it is at normal speed. The strategy is referenced so often because you see it across so many games. Down forward one, down forward two is in sight, and it's all AK doing right now, but oh, nope. he can't win! There are countless strategies, but their effectiveness will differ from game to game. This might be why it's hard for people to agree on what footsies are, and why it's kind of turned into a buzzword. And this raises the question, if footsies- Okay, I gotta, I gotta check something real quick. Yeah, this is kind of awkward. I should have done a full-blown video on it. Oh, well. Is there about movement I mean? and striking ranges, can't everything be considered footsies? Sure, but there are times when your amazing reach doesn't matter as much, like when you're up close and personal. No matter what anyone says, there is no law that requires you to play footsies. Sometimes you just want to brawl, but you can't just walk up to a skilled fighter without getting hit. That's why most games let you do much more than walk. Oh, also, a side note, for those that don't know, um, I've been mentioned in a game, um, Dojo Masters. It's, um, this is a game that's based on Karate Champ. It's, uh, you can go left, right, and there's punch and kick, and you can just do various, uh, combinations with them. You can run, roll, dive kick, demon flip, homing teleport, dash, rush attack, or even do a homing dash attack. These things can help you quickly bypass the fighting at further ranges and get right up to your opponent's face. Playing this way is known as rushdown, or the more derogatory, unga bunga. What the hell is unga bunga? That's right. <laughs> unga bunga! When people are hurling their entire bodies at you, it can be pretty dangerous. Nope. Oh. So how the heck do you stop this insanity? Well, if you're good enough, you can try to hit them before they can get to you. Um, the style I the style I play in uh in Dojo Masters uh, Krav Maga, they're um one of their big things is uh grabs. Um, again, I also set it to countering. So they're um I want to say they're at, they're they're good at anti rushdown, like what he's talking about here when they just fly in deal just fist flailing. Um, how can I explain this? The way, um, I know... The way both, um, striking and throwing works, if you do, um... If you do a leg takedown throw, which is, which is a kick, 
throw, it automatically uh, bypasses any kick attack that they were doing on you. So if they're kicking you, you can do a kick throw. You'll automatically counter that kick and you'll throw them. Um, the same with punching as well. So yeah, let, we'll continue. For example, hitting someone out of the air is called an anti-air. Anti -air. But this requires precise timing. Yep. Just like swinging in a baseball game, you can't expect to be successful by mashing. Mistime it and get struck out. Or in fighting, mistime it and get knocked out. This is one reason the Dragon Punch, aka Sheng Long, is such a good anti-air. It covers this whole area. But sometimes their rushdown will be too fast for yes. your reactions, which yes. means you might be face to face. Now finally, both of you are close enough to hug. But up close, the fight becomes very different for reasons other than being able to grab each other. There's little room to move forward, and the reach of your attack is less important because any attack will reach. What matters more here is who will grab or strike the other person first, which is determined by attack speed, or more technically, the startup animation. Naturally, the move with the faster startup speed will beat out nope. the slower ones, assuming the buttons are pressed at the same time. A reason why Fox's Shine is considered one of the best moves in Melee is because it starts up in one frame, aka instantly. That blue light special, man. And that jab that I called Stubby earlier will beat out the sword up close yeah. because it's much faster. When you hit someone during their attack startup animation like this, it's called a counter hit. And yep. depending on the move or game, the attacker might get rewarded with extra damage, more combo opportunities, or in punch out, an instant knockout. So how do you know which attacks are faster than others, and by how much? Well, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I spam. Or it's also one of the reasons why, when you're uh, watching me uh, when you're watching me play pinball, why you often see me just flapping the flipper and just ah, it's because I don't know what the fuck's going on. So it's just kind of a kind of a panic thing. Same thing with uh, same thing with uh, fighting games. It's, I think it's one of the reasons why I and lots of other people were spamming attacks. It's just we we don't know what the fuck's going on. And just, you, know, you, get so, you just toss something out there. And it also goes back to what I said probably 10, 15 minutes ago. Why uh, why the best players are so damn good. They're, they've been playing this game enough to know what to do when. So they don't need to spam. It's just one single button press at that, you know, at that moment. You know, they don't have to... You know, like me and me and lots of other people do. You could eyeball it, but it gets really hard to tell when we're talking about moves with differences of a few frames. A frame is one sixtieth of a second, which is the unit of time used to measure speed in fighting games. But thanks to cool people, there are frame data guides that show you the speed of each attack. Since the one jab is the fastest move Noctis has, you decide to jab up close, but your opponent blocks it. This is where the attacker is stuck in an attacking animation and the blocker is stuck in a blocking state known as block stun. The question is, who will be the first to recover and do a follow-up attack? The answer is Blue Noctis. He gets to attack one frame sooner because his jab made him plus one when it was blocked. I know this because yeah. I looked it up. If both Nocti followed up with a jab here, Blue Noctis would beat out Red so, Noctis. Um, I, what he's talking about, I, don't, I can't remember if he mentioned it already, it's called frame data. You could theoretically build a build your own combo just on frame data alone, but I don't I don't have the patience or I don't have the patience or technical know how to try to actually go you know sit on and you know put all this together. But I I know it's a possibility. It's by one frame. If a move is zero on block, they both recover at the same time, hitting each other. If a move is minus one on block, the blocker gets unstuck first by one frame and wins the exchange. This is called frame advantage. Each of the thousands of moves out there has an on block and on hit value that determine what your best follow up options are. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. The speed of the jab and its plus one on block frame advantage is why multi evo champ JDCR made an entire video discussing the importance of Tekken's one jab. 초보자 분들이 잘이 게임을 보일 때잘 보는 경우가 뭐냐면은 큰 기술만. And then, I guess uh, what he's talking about here, the one jab in Tekken, in Virtual Fighter, um, 
the ultimate bread and butter jab in there is actually the low punch, the the crouching punch. And I think it's cons I think it's considered the best move in the game. Plus, uh, it's also universal. Every character has it. Game 많은 역할을 하는 기술을 할 수가 있죠. 이런 이제 초보분들이 잘못 보는 부분을 이렇게 조금 작은 기술에 좀 포커스. Oh, uh, for what it's worth, the guy who makes these videos, uh, Gerald, I believe he's uh, bilingual or at least bilingual. He speaks English and uh, I want to say Korean. He may also speak Japanese as well. I don't know, but I know uh, English and Korean are his um, two languages. The frame advantage can also help explain why you get hit in certain situations. This is me blocking Law's dragon hammer move. The Law players watching will know that I shouldn't be mashing buttons here, but I did, and I died. This move is plus three on block, and his follow-up attack has a startup speed of 11 frames. That means I needed a move with a startup speed faster than eight frames to beat out Law's attack. Yep. According to the frame data of my character, that move doesn't exist. This means no matter what attack I mashed, I would have gotten hit by Law's follow-up move. In other words, it's a trap. More specifically, a frame trap. Frame traps are one of the top reasons why yeah. button mashing doesn't work. After Asuka's while signing four. And then sometimes, um, I don't hear it that often, but um, like certain fighting gamers, they'll say, don't block, don't block. That's one of the reasons why, because of the way the frame data is set up, the block stun that a certain move creates is so high that uh, if you if you do block, you're basically stuck. You're actually just better off um, eating the damage than still being able to be free to do what you want afterwards than actually block the attack and being stuck in that being stuck, you know, being stuck in block stun for the rest of the round. Again, that's um, it's just the way the frame data is set up. On hit, you cannot sidestep. You cannot press a single. The Asuka's while signing four. On hit, you cannot sidestep. You cannot press a single button. Otherwise, down two will counter hit and launch you. It's something that Fergus likes to call the scrub killer. While being plus is great, being minus can be really bad. If your attack on block has enough minus frames, your opponent will have yep. enough time to punish you before you can yep. recover. And it's also, um, it's also horses for courses as well, in case it wasn't obvious. When you're up close to your opponent, you don't do the roar, big old haymaker move. No, you, you do like the light quick stuff. You know, because if you try to do a big ass move when you're, when you're cozy close to your opponent, opponent he, he can counter you with uh, nearly anything. So. But sometimes, even if you have enough time to punish, you might not reach. The pushback in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is huge. One block sweep can send you back to footsie's range, and one extra fireball can take you to the end of the screen. ST Ryu says a lull to your nerdy frame data while zoning you out with fireballs. At this range, your punches and kicks won't reach, and if you don't have a projectile to fight back with, you have to dodge and close in. Mashing here will be as effective as mashing here. Friendship. Friendship. These are situations where the striking ranges of punches and kicks are less Um. I have a feeling that this part here, I don't recall being in the original video. I think this was one of the things that uh, triggered his uh, other video as um, age-restricted. Why that? I don't know. Friendship. 
friendship. Friendship? These are situations where the striking ranges of punches and kicks are less emphasized, but there are also moments when movement is less emphasized, like when you can't move. Holy shit, this if is a long these one. If ungamentals or a fireball game are godlike, okay, you 17. might score a knockdown on your opponent. The down player is at a disadvantage because they cannot move or attack while the standing player can do whatever they want. This is where- And then, um, in Dojo Masters, whenever somebody gets knocked down, an actual full-blown reset occurs. Like, they, they, got, they get a reset back to neutral position and everything. It's like, round one, fight, that kind of thing. It's kind of unique in um in other fighting game or it's kind of it's kind of unique from other fighting games in that most other fighting games you knock them down they're back up within a second or two but you're still free to move wherever you want. The honorable player will step back and let their opponent get up and take a breather, right? Of course not. This is where you make their life heck. While your opponent is down, you have a chance to move in closer or run away, whichever is best for your character. Depending on your positioning, you might also get a chance to attack your opponent as soon as they get up. The art of attacking your opponent Midi. while they're getting up is called okizeme. Right. Oki from the Japanese word to wake up, and zeme from the word for attack. Like a lot of beat-em-up games, you usually can't hit them while they're on the ground because they're invulnerable, but you can do the next best thing. Time an attack so it hits them the very first moment they are vulnerable. That's meaty. This kind of attack is called meaty, but meaty is a spectrum. Oh, that was so meaty! The later in your attack animation you hit your opponent, the meatier it is, and the sooner your animation. Okay, I can't remember. I can't remember where I read it or saw it, but let me let me try to explain it. Most every other attack in the game, you're wanting to you're wanting to hit them on the first part of the active part of the attack, on the first part. A meaty attack, you're trying to, you actually want to hit them on the tail end of that, uh, of that, uh, of that attack. But like I said, I can't remember the exact words used, but that's, that's generally it. It will recover, giving you extra plus frames. Button mashers tend to eat meaty attacks like a barbecue buffet because they're always pressing buttons while waking up instead of blocking. So the solution is to just block, right? Often Not always. yes, but depending on the type of attack and direction, you have to choose the correct way Cross to block. Cross up. High or low, and left or right. When the attacker makes this ambiguous for you, it's called a mix-up. I'm gonna block this block, mix-up. But what if you don't want to block, and you don't want to get hit? There is another option. In addition to being a good anti-air, Shenglong is also one of many different types of invincible reversals. If timed correctly, these moves will be invulnerable at the moment you get up, allowing you to go through the media attack and hit them instead. <laughs> oh, oh, the reversal, yeah. So how do you defeat Cheng Long and stand a chance? You just move away or yeah. block. Ryu is yep. <sighs> I forgot what I was gonna say. But yeah, you don't you don't always want to crowd your opponent. Because they can do something like this. And again, um, it could also be a good idea to get as close as possible to your opponent to try to, kind of like what I said about the uh, Samurai Showdown, try to induce, try to induce your opponent into doing that big ass, big ass swing attack so you can counter attack them. Kind of the same thing here. There's actually a, there's like a happy medium you want to stand, you don't want to stand too far away from them because then he ain't going to do anything but too close and you get hit with the uppercut. So there's just out of reach of that, of that uppercut. Exaggerating about Sheng Long the whole time. And of course, to beat Block, you grab. Right corner pressure, power going in. What's next? Another one? And three? Throw no, no, don't tell one. me four! Don't tell me four! Don't no. tell me four! As you can see, Okizema is about commitments and decision making because the timing of the exchange revolves around someone getting up. Some games like Tekken let you hit people on the ground and from the ground, but you still have to get up eventually. And sometimes, $60,000 can be riding on the one decision yep. you commit to. 60,000 with one mix up. So are these sick reads or lucky guesses? This can get pretty political, especially waking up super while American. 
Not enough to kill. Oh, oh he's, he's got him, him again! again. He's three got him! For he's three. got him! Such is the nature of Oki Zeme. Some or all of these concepts apply to every fighting game, but each game will have a different take on how they work. And the diversity of characters allow there to be unique playstyles within the game. But the other aspect of what makes these characters interesting is how you play them. One of the most memorable Street Fighter matches was a DreamHack winner. This was, um, I remember, this is another match I watched. This is another thing that got me into fighting games. 2013. An unknown amateur Ryu who went by the tag Gandhi had such a bizarre playstyle, he tilted his more orthodox opponent and ended up beating him. FSP is completely... <laughs> FSP... And then, related yet unrelated, pinball is ripe with this. Like, I could go... I could go on a table like Bram Stoker's Dracula and practically stomp the yard and, you know, get three multiballs go out at once while, you know... You know, do that for a, do that for a long time, rack up a huge score. Then I can go to a, I can go to an easier table, like a big shot, and not do jack shit on. Him. So, yeah, it, same thing here. He's completely, I, I want to say mind effed. <laughs> and this match kind of ended up being. The but yeah, this this is pretty much how I play here, um, Gandhi. Yeah. The Eche Mono of Street Fighter, a well-intentioned beginner uncompromised by formal training. But while Gandhi was playing at a beginner level, he was far from randomly button mashing. These jabs, even though he was whipping against a crouching opponent, indicate that he understands quick attacks are preferable at close ranges. Him jumping back and throwing fireballs shows he wants to throw projectiles safely from a distance, and here he even does an anti-air. His rushdown jump attacks are so unpredictable, even he doesn't seem to know when he'll do them, and when he knocks down his opponent, he adds pressure using yep. some bait. I've said this before about, uh, about playing amateur opponents. They can be pretty tough, too. Even if you're a freaking pro. I mean, amateurs, I mean, if they don't know what they're doing, you're not going to know what they're doing. So... I think there's probably a technical term for it. I don't know what it is, though. Zen, maybe? Basic Okizeme, even closing out a round with a meaty jab. Oh. And of course, he uses invincible dragon punch reversals on his wake up to stop pressure. A lot. Jump. Not be doing this. I wouldn't even be. Bait. Bait the team. Oh my goodness. Gandhi might not have known how to FADC combo into Ultra like his opponent, but he had a semblance of the basics. And it was enough for him to enter a tournament, win a match, and have a great time doing it. Isn't that what everyone's trying to do, after all? This was Gerald from Port. Okay. So, yeah, um... I forgot what I was gonna say, but yeah. To kind of start, I was... I was trying to... I, I still kind of equate fighting games with pinball. If only because both of them are basically skill-based. But I guess, um, oh, thank you. It was just a major pain in the ass trying to transition back and forth between playing pinball and, um, commenting on the video. This might have been something that I probably, um, uh, probably would have been better off if, uh, if I had a decent video editor. That, you know, that was uh, comprehensive and easy to use, yet versatile. I've yet to find one. Oh, thank you. Oh, same here. But yeah, um, I guess button mashing to me is pretty much an it's pretty much an amateur move. Uh, I said it earlier. You, you're let me pull my controller on. You're you're, you're spamming buttons because you have no idea what the fuck's going on. So you just you're it's basically just a spray and pray. 
And again, I do it in pinball all the time. But at least in my mind, pinball is a lot more unpredictable than fighting games are. So, I mean, you could, especially if you're playing an actual human opponent, I don't like to use the term because it's so freaking cliche, but you can you can get in, you can get inside his head and oftentimes or potentially get inside his head and oftentimes know what he's gonna throw before he even throws it. You can't you can only do that to some extent in pinball. Because I'm sure you guys watch me do it too. You know? I make these you know, making these great shots or doing damn good on a, on one table. Then on the next table, you do absolute dog shit. And there's really, ultimately, nothing I can do about it. At least, um... Yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought. I mean, part of this, too, is, uh... I... Yeah, I kind of want to do some, uh... I kind of want to do some pinball, too, so... But yeah, maybe if I had a, if I had a decent video editor, again, I've yet to find one. Maybe i like, do a video on the, on the correlation I see between fighting games and pinball. Okay, and I gotta look at something else here, too. And then um, something else too, I'll go ahead and say this now. Um, because of this video I just played, there may be a chance that uh, my stream video, that I'll, I'll try to export the stream video to YouTube, um, it might get copyright claimed. Um, it might even get removed entirely because YouTube didn't like something about it. So just be on the lookout for a community post of me posting the Twitch link of this stream video because they're to this day they're still a lot more lenient about what I put on my stream than YouTube is I thought that was gonna happen yesterday because I ended up screwing up and uh accidentally playing a little bit of copyrighted music on uh FX3 I thought they were going to copyright claim my whole entire video, but no, I got lucky. Okay, yeah, beat, yeah, beat me to it, Kataro. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to try doing that, too. I was just going to make a separate, a separate video just for my reaction to that Corey Gaming video. Yeah, um, maybe even, um, maybe even fire up, uh, fire up by a Windows Movie Maker and just completely chop out the, um, uh, the reaction video I did. Just chop it out and go from FX3 right to Pinball Arcade, which, which I'm about to do. Right on the set. Game's lagging. Ace. Oh. 
Three of a kind. And register. Million left. Million left. Full house. Should be extra ball. You only had to hit it once. one. I feel like a million. I gotta check something real quick. Um, I fat fingered a button a few moments ago. This is unintentional. God fucking damn it! Okay. Ready, set, draw. Oh. Well, oh, looks like I've been playing this a while. Should be a two ball. Yeah.
No, they're go. Not so much for that. Oh, two pair. I can't remember what this one got you. Should be a three ball. Two pair. Ah, uh, working on a full house. house another extra ball oh Joel you jackass I don't either Working on a straight.
I'd like to think so. Wagon. Fucked it up. Trying to take down the drop targets. There was one more I haven't done yet. Oh. Barely scratched it. Good way to start.
Back on the upper play field. Double flipper, bitch. No, I can't. Told you. No, I can't. Well, just barely. No, I can't. Well, how about that? I actually did. No way. Didn't do deadly squat. You're on our turf now. <coughs> Balls are meant to fly, they have wings. wings. Don't hit me, it does. Yeah. Blast that card. Chuck 
chicken. Probably won't. Went right by me. Double flipper, bitch. Always nice having a multi ball that ends as quickly as it begins. Yeah. I know it's gonna go in the out lane anyway. Hey, the game is violent enough. Hmm. If this table goes the distance, I'm gonna have to cut the table off right at 2 a.m. So here in about 15 minutes. I have played on this table for that long if not longer.
Oh, fuck that up. God, you can do that on here. So much for that. So much for that. That's fine. It ends the ball quicker. Having a bit of trouble hitting the uh, freeway shots. Locked it up.
Game's lagging. Lamp dick. Oh, I got it. Ah, jumpy. Actually registered. an extra ball there plus um yeah it's 2 a.m right now so i'm gonna go ahead and uh 